what we do at, at the studio, it's not just web documentary. We mostly are, a, let's say, a, a narrative laboratory. We kind of explore different ways of telling stories, the different format of storytelling. So we develop, it's always author work uh, with the point of view, but on different kind of platforms. It could be on mobile, app, it could be game, uh, uh, interactive installation in public space, uh, and also, of course, web documentaries. When we want to uh, talk about a, uh, a subject or uh, tell a story, we mostly um, think of what we want to say, what we want the people to to experiment, to feel, to uh, think of, and then we we uh, we just question ourselves and wonder what's the best way of telling the story. Is it through a mobile app? Let's say. I could give you the example of a, a project called the Cancer of Time, and it was about our incapacity of doing nothing. No. So we wanted to rehabilitate the, the 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 nothing, to do nothing, just take the time and do nothing. And why we are so un, unable to do nothing today is probably because of mobile phones. Uh, each time we have a, a, um, a pause or nothing to do or are we are waiting the first thing we do is grab the, the iphone and look at it so we wanted to tell this story and have the people a reflection about that subject so the best way to tell that story was to actually develop a mobile app and it was uh, like a fable about uh, with animation and little games and but telling this story about our incapacity of doing nothing so we call the project the cancer of time The types of interactions, I mean, they're, they're various and uh, as, as she was saying, um, a narrative laboratory will actually seek, you know, what, what new ways we can create interactions, but um, I guess, uh, you know, it, it, if you're, our starting point was the documentary. I mean, there was, the, you know, there were projects where we, we, we had documentary content and we, we wanted to see what we can do on the web with them. So. In terms of narrative, then you had the obvious. Okay, well, choose, choose sort of you know your path in the story, and then you know m multiple storylines. But that's the most. I mean, I think we've departed from that, and we've evolved from that to actually interactions that that uh, where where basically people are are bringing to the project in a way that the project wouldn't exist without the people's contribution. And so it's really not necessarily just about a story being told and fragmented uh, on the web, but really uh, involving the participation and making it like a collective artwork. And uh, I think the, the idea of doing an, an art piece is important because it's, um, you know, in a traditional story, you'd, you'd, you'd really have uh, a linear uh, narrative um, and that has a certain length, while on the web, basically, some of the, some of the, some of the projects are really experiences things that, peop that we'd want people to experiment, to, to try, to give them uh, a feeling or to give them, uh, to, to make them realize one thing, you know? And that's a very simple aim, a very simple target instead of a big story, a big narrative. And so that switch uh, happened when we started thinking of the projects as, you know, uh, something that is less, less, less linear narratives, but more exper ex experiential. If we ask the people to do that kind of interaction, it's because we want them to do this because it's what we want them to experiment and try and, and so it's always, we never put interaction that haven't been thought of first of, first of all. We like to have the, the public in the, being the heart of the creation process. Documentary has been linked for a long time with television and been financed by television. So uh, the uh, Fonds Canadien de la Télévision uh, uh, financed most of the documentaries uh, for the independent producers. It's uh, unfortunately now, well, fortunately or unfortunately, there's not there's not that big of a demand uh, on television for documentary, and so it's it's been going down. But at the same time, I mean, documentaries have been show, showing up at festivals more and more, and there's been like uh, at the festival in Montreal, the festival. Uh, um, uh, Festival du Documentaire RIDM, um, the the youth have sort of taken over the festival and made you know made it their own, and so in a way it, there's there's this um, 
there's really this, uh, this enthusiasm for documentary, but more in terms of, uh, less in terms of television, but more in terms of, of, of real documentaries that have more authentic uh, approaches and, and that have more point of view, and that I find more interesting. So we're lucky enough that it, we're the kind of last bastillon, last place where you, can, you, don't, you don't have all the constraints of television or, or the marketplace to, um, that sort of guide or shape your product. So in a way, we're, we're very lucky. Um, and, uh, and so we try to give the filmmakers the, you know, the, the best setting to make, to, make, uh, to make their films. And then we also distribute them. Um, so there's still faith. Uh, but, um, and, and, and also, I, I, m on, my, on my part, most of my work is actually working with the filmmakers to sort of, sort of make the difference between something they would make for TV where they wouldn't have time and they would take shortcuts and they would, you know, sit somebody in a chair and have this, their story told and then put B-roll and, you know, have basically something that would be more formatted towards TV and something that has been done in TV for years and bring them towards more a cinematograph like a, a, a cinema approach where uh, basically they, they, you know, they have more of a, uh, something that's alive in the documentary that we're following that has an arc that, uh, you know, that where, where we can uh, have empathy towards the characters because we see them living on screen. The internet, but you know, when we say the internet, um, I mean there's the internet connection, but you know, the way we consume uh, television, at least in Canada, is, switch, is, is changing. The way we consume films also is changing. The distribution is changing. And it's not true that people only, only see it on, on their phones or on their tablet. Now we have televisions at home that basically are little cinemas that, you know, where your experience is very decent, it's very good. Uh, and so, and, and these televisions are basically fed through the internet uh, a lot more and more. And so, um, yes, in terms of distribution, I think that it will be the, it will be the, the way that documentaries will find their public. And uh, the, the, the channels for distribution for, specifically for documentary, haven't been, um, haven't, aren't, aren't in place yet. At least, in, at least in Canada, and, uh, and, but the nfb.ca, the, the platform that we have online where most of our collection is free, um, is, is, is a great place to find, to find amazing documentaries. There are more than 3,000 pieces that are available for free online. And basically you can stream them and if you're hooked up to your television then you can watch them on your TV. So that, that's, that's great and it's close to experience that we'd want you know, in terms of quality. Um, and, um, and we're working on, on, on really rethinking the way we have a link with the public online to really offer them what they want in terms of documentary. So, yeah. so our hope is that through nfp.ca we will have a, a, a great window for Canadian, uh, Canadian documentaries. Most of our collection is available for free, so in a way We'd be happy that people pirated our, you know, <laughs> our work, uh, but the, in, in, the, there's some uh, there's some some works that we distribute, you know. Um, uh, I mean, I don't I don't really know what to say about this subject. I think I think that it's um, we're 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 going towards more and more uh, people expecting um, expecting content to be free online. I mean, for, in our case, it's particular because basically the the taxpayer has already paid for the film, so we. We want to to, uh, uh, to to bring it back to the Canadians, but what's great is that it's not geo-blocked, and so it's available throughout the world. So you can go on nfp.ca tomorrow and watch our films. It goes to places where where reportage or, or television um, can't, and so it's a level of discussion that goes more in depth and that has point of view. And point of view in our in our society, where where you know um, journalism pretends to be sort of objective, uh, is a refresh is something refreshing, something that we look for, because there's so many there's so much information, but when you have someone intelligent that is sensitive to the world and comes and says, well, I, I'll tell you a story, but I'll tell you a story with my perspective on it and uh, how I feel it's important, and they're the links that I made. It really, it really is great. It's like curated reality, right? So and we, we, we look for that and we, uh, it's rare. And so I think more and more we turn to, you know, um, 
you, we turn to magazines that have curated content like that. We turn to uh, websites that have these these opinion pieces, and uh, and in and in documentary, um, I mean, an hour and a half is enough time to reveal you, you know something important about the world we live in, and I think that that's why it's very relevant right now to have this form, because other other mediums don't don't take the time and don't go in depth. Um, everything goes so fast. We have so much information, so we need these uh, documentary filmmakers to 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 speak and really to prendre la parole, as we say in French, is to to to, uh, to 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 put that soapbox, get on it, and say something about the world. So um, I really feel that documentary filmmakers are uh, people that um, that have a voice, that basically take a stand, that uh, that say something about the world. So they're like writers; they you know they bring something new. And I, I think that there's a place for them. I'd say say something about the world around you. I mean, and, and exercise yourself in, 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 uh, in doing this as much as possible. Because the more you, you, will, you, you will be in front of the, of, of, of the blank page or the editing or, or in front of, with your camera in front of the subject and you'll say, how do I perceive this world? And you ask yourself these questions, what do I have to say about this world and how do I feel about this? Then the more you develop this, this habit of, of, of taking a stand or, taking, or, or, or being sensitive to what's around you and, and uh, making your voice heard. Now, making your voice heard doesn't mean to be, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be uh, putting yourself in front of the camera. But as soon as you open your camera and you, you decide to film something and not what's just beside it or to, uh, or to even to edit, you're basically, you're basically saying something about our world. So the more you do it, the more you develop this muscle of, you know, this habit and, and, uh, and this capacity of, of, of being sensitive to the world. So, so I say do it, just do it in, in, like profusely. And then, and then you'll develop what you have to say and what you want to say. Because developing a voice takes a lot of time and it's like you need to practice it.